When we introduced the Nexus R5 VCU a little while back, one of the very first questions we got asked is, hey, when can I get one of those cool keypads for my Elite Series ECU? And I'm happy to finally let you know the answer to that is now. So just hit pause, shoot over to the web store and hit that little buy now button because these keypads are gonna change everything for you. And what you're gonna notice in this video is that I'm using the new Haltech PD16 power distribution module to demonstrate how nicely both the PDM and the keypad integrate with the Elite Series ECUs using the NSP software. And I am 100% sure that many of you guys are going to wanna to know way more about the PD16, so I'm gonna tell you up front, this video is not a PD16 video. I absolutely will be doing a PD16 walkthrough showing how the unit works and how it integrates, but that's not this video. We'll leave that for next time. Today's focus is the Howtech keypad. So first things first, there's two versions, an eight button and a 15 button. And no matter which one you choose, they both come with a handy quick start guide, which you won't need because you're watching this video. You get a pack of decals that's got the most common labels that you're going to need, plus a handful of blanks so you can write your own labels on it. And of course, all the necessary cables and adapters that you're going to need to connect the Haltech keypad to a Haltech Elite or Nexus Series ECU. First up, you are not limited to just one keypad. You can, in fact, have up to four in total. So two 15 button and two eight button versions for those serious driving cockpits. So you have the potential to run up to 46 CAN keypad buttons for all your key pressing goodness. The next thing to know is that installation and setup is actually really, really simple, but it does require at least version 3.03 firmware for the Elite Series ECU, which is now available for download from howtech.com. And because I know I'm going to get this question in the comments, all of these Haltech keypads are the same. So if you purchased a keypad for your Nexus ECU six months ago, you can use the same keypad on the Elite Series ECU now. The code within the keypad itself has not changed. Only the firmware and software for the ECU need to be updated. And with that out of the way, let's plug this bad boy in and set up some functions on our ECU and our PDM. The first thing the ECU needs to know is to expect a CAN keypad and a PD16 to be on the CAN bus network. So we go into the software and we scroll down to the Howtech CAN system, scroll to the very bottom, and now you can see there's a list of keypads and PD16s that can be enabled. If you can't see these options, it's probably because you haven't updated to the latest version of software. So go and do it now. Do it. With both keypads and PD16s, all units are programmed as A units from factory. You can use the NSP software to change an ID of a unit from A to B later on if you need to, but we'll cover that in a different video. So for us today, we're going to set up a three by five keypad and a PD16A. And because I'm here inside the studio, I'm going to crank up the backlight brightness and LED brightness to 100%. Although in a vehicle, the default settings of 50 and 70 are actually a really good level in my opinion. Now I wanna assign my keypad to switch on my headlights. So I go back over here into the menu node structure and I click on three by five A and Wait, nothing, just disable device. Strange, because this is kind of where I would expect to have seen a keypad to set up. And this is where the Howtech CAN keypad and PD16 integration differs from most other systems. Once the keypad or PD16 is enabled in the software, it's as though those inputs and outputs were always meant to be there. So rather than having to go into a keypad device and define the function you wanna control with a particular key, you rather go to the function menu, and in this case, I wanna set up some headlight control. So I find headlights as a function, and then I go to assign the wiring, hit edit connection, and now I can select from any available input and output to be set up for my headlights. In this case, I wanna use the three by five A keypad. So I scroll down and click on whichever button I want the headlight switch to be on. And while we're here, because we're using the PD16 to provide power to the headlights, I'll assign one of the PD16 A-damp outputs as the power for the lights. And I'll use another for the parkers. So now we're all set up. Of course, now that the ECU and PD16 know the headlights have been switched on, this information can be broadcast over CAN to the IC7 dash, which if you've got a different set of gauge faces for nighttime and daytime, will switch to their nighttime mode 
when the lights are on. Let's go ahead now and assign a few more of these buttons to functions. Now, one common override for drag races is a fuel pump override. Basically, it's a button that you press to prime an electric fuel pump for as long as you need to to get fuel pressure up. This might also be used to drain the fuel out of a tank or to prime the fuel lines before starting, something like that. Either way, it's something that we get asked for a lot, so I'm gonna set it up on this keypad. Because the ECU is already controlling the electric fuel pump, we go into the fuel pump function, and from here, we simply enable the existing override. Again, we'll hit edit connection and scroll down to select the key on the keypad that I wanna use for this function. I've got the option here to select either separate key presses for push on and push off like I have with my headlights. But for this one, I really just wanna override the pump output for as long as I'm holding the button down. So I set the button mode to momentary. Now, what else should I set up on this keypad? Oh, I know. Why don't I set up a couple of different boost settings? That'll be fun. But to do this, I'm actually gonna be a little bit tricky. I don't just want two boost settings, I actually want three, four, maybe five, because well, I'm greedy. The way to do this is by hacking the rotary trim input function. The rotary trim pot is one of these multi-position knobs here, um, and each one of the positions on the knob can be set as a different target boost level. And we're gonna emulate that with one of the CAN keypads. So we can actually do something very similar using the CAN keypad, and because each button on the keypad has three LEDs above it, the LED status light act a bit like the first few positions on the rotary trim knob. So let's go back into NSP and actually set up the CAN keypad as a rotary trim knob, and then we'll apply that input to the target boost control map. As usual, the first thing we do is go into the function setup page. We'll select rotary trim input, and rather than select the analog voltage, we'll select a digital switched input because ultimately that's all that these keyput inputs are to the ECU. They're simply a digital switch that can be used to turn something on or off. Once we've set up the input type to digital switched, again, we hit edit connection and scroll down to the CAN keypad buttons and select the particular button or buttons we wanna use. And because I like to know what each input is being used for on the software, I'm gonna give this input function a name. In this case, it's the boost up down button. There's a few settings here that I'd like to talk about. The first one is the remember position checkbox. Now this setting tells the ECU what to do next time you key the ignition off and on. Should the selected boost level on the keypad reset back to zero or should it remember the last previously selected position? We have the input style. Now using a single input style limits the number of positions available to three. Actually it's four, but we'll get into that in a moment. Um, it also means that you don't have individual buttons for up and down, but rather each time you press the button, it'll go up by one in the position until it gets to the fourth, and that goes back to the start. The input light mode controls how the LEDs on the keypad light up. In bar mode, the LEDs stack their on status. In dot mode, there's only ever a maximum of one LED on at a time. If you want individual buttons for up or down, that's totally possible. You do that by selecting dual input style and assigning one button to be the increase and the other to be the decrease. All right, so now I've created my buttons for increase and decrease. I need to assign them to boost control, well, or anything else for that matter. But in this case, I wanted to set up boost control. So I scroll now down to the boost control setup, closed loop target. And you can see that at the moment, across the whole RPM range, I'm targeting 10 PSI. But if I press the F3 button or go into setup table setup, I can enable another axis. In this case, I wanna enable that axis to be my new boost up and boost down buttons. So I double click on the digital version of the rotary trim module I just created, and in the axis values, I enter position values for zero, one, two, and three. Now, remember previously I said that three LEDs is actually four positions. That's because the zero position, or all LEDs being off, is actually a valid selection. So you kinda of get a free setting here. Okay, so I've set up the positions in the boost control target axis, when I go back into my boost control target pressure map, now I've got the ability to change my target boost based on the position of the input, zero, one, two, three, four, however many inputs that I set up. Now in this case, I'm just gonna do something super simple and I'm going to increase my target boost in each position by five PSI so that you can see what it all looks like. You can use the keypad to enable any number of functions, things like rolling anti-lag or nitrous control, cruise control, data logging, AC switches and those sorts of things are the obvious targets for a keypad. 
Now the big advantage here is the pure number of inputs that the keypad makes available, which expands the functionality of any Elite Series ECU significantly. But I really think that the keypad is going to find its home in applications where the Haltech PD16 is implemented in conjunction with an Elite Series ECU and a keypad. But again, that is a topic for another day. For now, if you really want to see all the possibilities of the CAN keypad, then I'd suggest you head over to the Haltech website, download the latest version of NSB software, and start actually playing with it for yourself. You will be amazed at the possibilities. Now, if you've got any questions about a keypad and what it can do for you, please drop those questions in the comments below. Don't forget to ring the bell to stay up to date with everything Haltech on YouTube, subscribe to our newsletter, and give us a follow or a like on the socials. Well, I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.